Okay, guys, so it's about 1031 and uh, we've got most of the participants here. So I'm just going to kick off here. So my name is Steve Schock and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Novatech. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you to the webinar, uh, a joint venture between Teltonica and Novatech Technologies. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we kick off here. So I'm going to just speak for just a, a brief few moments and then I'm going to hand it over to our friends uh, Tadas and uh, Marius at Teltonica who are going to talk for maybe about 20 minutes about a bit about Teltonica, the products and some great use cases. And then of course we're going to have a, some time for uh, Q&A at the end. And you guys are welcome to submit your questions at any time. Uh, and we'll collate them to the end and then whatever we don't get answered we will reply uh, to everybody that attended this webinar with uh, more detailed answers. Um, so obviously on the call we have Marius and Tadas from Teltonica. I'll go, I'm going to let them introduce themselves in just a moment. But I just wanted to uh, kind of kick off the webinar uh, announcing that we're just so be so pleased to be working with Teltonica. We've known about them for a while and we've actually been officially working with them for a, a much uh, for a, just a short time, a couple months. Uh, now, some of you may know Teltonic, but they're a pretty big force in the global supply of uh, routers and gateways. Um, they're in fact, actually, they're in the top five suppliers of cellular uh, routers and gateways worldwide. So, uh, like I said, a force to be reckoned with. Um, and I said we're happy to be working with Teltonica, and, and it really is for a few reasons. I mean, if you, if you know anything you know about them, they're a very rugged, uh, very uh, stable, uh, and very reasonably priced product. Um, all things that are great. Uh, for our channel partners and then for the end clients as well. Um, Teltonica, they're a privately owned company, uh, so they're wholly in control of their own destiny. They're not at the behest of their shareholders, so that's always a good thing from an R&D perspective. Um, uh, all of their products are manufactured onshore in owned facilities, so, you know, so, uh, to some degree that lessens some of the um, supply chain issues they may have because uh, they're in control of the, the supply chain. So, so I'd love to go on more about Teltonica, but uh, now it's time, I think we're gonna pass it over to uh, Marius and Tadas, and they're gonna uh, speak more uh, about the brand. Thank you so much, Steve, for such a great introduction. So, you know, first of all, good morning to everybody from Lithuania. Um, uh, right now we have an afternoon, but we're happy that, you know, the time difference is not too big that we can do this and we can introduce the Teltonica devices and the brand and our use case is directly to um, the North American audience. So my name is Marius Navitskas and I'm uh, head of operational marketing here. Um, together with me, I have um, Tadas, who's, who's just an excellent member of the team and he has lots of experience with North American market from, from previous endeavors. So as Steve mentioned, please feel free to ask any questions using the Q&A functionality and uh, we will be very happy to, to answer them. Uh, Good morning to you all of you. I am very pleased, as Marius asked, is pleased to be here with you all. My name is Talis from company Teltonica. I'm working here for more than three years already, and I have started my journey as a sales manager. And today I'm working in operational marketing department. Firstly, I would like to say big thank to you, Novotech team, for this invitation. So, as uh, Steve told already, Teltonica is, Networks is part of Teltonica IoT Group, which is the, in the business for more than 20 years already and sold more than 10 million devices worldwide. IoT Group employs more than 900 employees, out of which more than 300 are working in Networks Department. Our headquarters in Lithuania and we have offices worldwide as we want to be closer to our customers as possible. As his headquarters are based in Lithuania, so is our manufacturing facility. So all manufacturing is located in European Union. That's why we are capable to provide great quality as we maintain high EU standards. Five fully automatic SMT assembly lines are capable to produce up to 10 million devices per year. Talking about Teltonica Networks as a company, last year we achieved a superb milestone of growing 50% comparing to 2018. This growth was achieved mainly in very competitive European Union market as more and more companies appreciated the value we deliver. 
This year, despite coronavirus pandemic, we are trying to grow even faster and reach 67% of growth rate, which from my knowledge and experience is a high, huge number to a company which is quite a while in the business. And now let's talk about our product portfolio. We focus on three key areas. Our products are designed to be reliable with expected life cycle of at least five years. Our standard warranty for all our networking devices is two years, which can be extended up to five years. Today, security is one of the top priorities. We are investing a lot in security of our products. Our devices are implemented in police vehicles, ATMs, and other critical infrastructure. We developed our products to be easy to use for everyone with no special training needed. We are always adding new features like O2 APN so that routers would be ready to use straight out of the box. Before speaking about the hardware and comparison of the products, I should highlight that hardware can be made by any company, but not the hardware makes the product so good. Software does. All our products have the same operating system called Root OS. This is a software that was made and developed through, throughout more than 10 years of experience by more than 50 R&D engineers. With this baggage of developments, we managed to create an operating system which is based on Linux with the help of OpenWRT, which is very user-friendly, so almost anyone can use it and understand it, no matter that there are many different features that we have included, such as multiple VPNs, firewalls, tunnels, and very more. Furthermore, our operating system is very friendly and interactive, so you can easily connect it to other platforms or devices. Also, we have seen that we can make such a great operating system. We put this experience into making one of the best cloud-based software systems called RMS. RMS is a remote management system which follows the same philosophy of having its core values, security, reliability, and easy to use. To RMS, we have put a lot of efforts to making it highly secured with free level security authentication, including password change, email verification, and ID biometrics, meaning that you can use it secure, your account linked to your mobile phone, where you can use face ID, fingerprint ID, or a PIN code. So it is a cloud-based platform. We keep it on AWS servers. Furthermore, RMS has a possibility to reach other devices behind our router, meaning that from RMS platform, you will be able to access, for example, a Cisco Web UI or a common line. Also, since we are trying to make this platform easy to use, for our partners, you can have a possibility to update all your fleet of Teltonica routers in a single window, including firmware updates and multiple configuration. So now let's go through our product portfolio for North America market and let's begin with best seller, seller router, Route 240. 4G LT CAT4 device, which is equipped with one SIM card slot and two Ethernet ports one LAN and one WAN, which can be configured as LAN. Small, rugged router fits to very small places. It supports BGN Wi-Fi. Our Wi-Fi is enriched with multiple features. It can act as an access point mode and station mode at the same time. A rugged and durable professional 4G LT dual SIM seller router Route 950 which is equipped with four Ethernet ports for missioning critical application, wireless access point with hotspot functionality, one failover feature, automatic switch to avail available backup connection, VLAN or cellular, and of course it's compatible with our remote management system, security features like VPNs, firewalls, web filters, and many more. Route 955 is dual SIM and four Ethernet ports router. It is the second best selling device on our portfolio as it is equipped with various industrial interfaces such as RS-232, 
RS485 serial, multiple inputs and outputs for remote monitoring and control. GPS positioning with geofacing functionality. And it also has micro SD and USB interfaces. Moreover, rock aluminum housing compatible with DIN rail and surface mounting options. The last but not least uh, product in our product portfolio for North America, Root X11 is a great all-rounder, most powerful device from our product portfolio. Featuring LTE CAT6 with dual SIM and dual band Wi-Fi, this router is equipped with four gigabit Ethernet ports and additional, it features GPS and Bluetooth low energy 4.0 for even more implementation flexibility. Perfect for, for applications where a single device must be used as a fast primary or backup internet source and Wi-Fi for internet sharing is needed. As I have highlighted the main features of all our products for North America region, here you are able to see the differences between each our product and which cellular router to choose to your solution, to your needs, or to your customer needs. And at the bottom, you are able to see the MSRP of our devices. And I think now you can understand how we are achieving such a rapid growth in our company as we provide high value for mid end price. So just to confirm that the, the, if you go back one uh, yeah, yeah. to that, those are MSRPs in, uh, in US dollars. So I know we're <laughs> Novatex in Canada right now, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of what we're looking at uh, from a US dollar perspective. Yes. Thanks, Steve, for no clarification. <laughs> and as we try to be physically next to our customers, as well as remotely and help our customers when we are not working. Therefore, we added all our knowledge, all our experience into our wiki page. Uh, there you can find technical information, configuration examples, installation photos, marketing materials, and other useful information. Here, Teltonica users can find answers to nine out of 10 questions regarding our products. We also have a crowd support forum, which is self-sustaining community support portal it's a great way for us to get the feedback and suggestions from a huge community of Teltonica networking devices users. Let's talk about some of the most important competitive advantages that we have. We manufacture highly functional devices, not limited to any specific industry sector. Security of our products has been recognized by independent experts and certifications. We develop everything ourselves, in-house and use not uh, and use only tested and established technologies therefore we can ensure the perfect synergy between hardware and firmware our products are easy to work with and configure requiring no special training we provide thousands of products for mission critical applications such as smart grid energy and financial services and finally we have offer high-end product for a mid-end price. As we are working globally, our devices are certified in various countries, starting from Australia and New Zealand, and now to North America. So talking about uh, network business cases, Maris we're gonna help with that, and he will give a very nice stories and how our routers are used. Thanks for attention. Thanks, thanks, Tadas. It's it's really you know Teltonica Networks in a nutshell, and you know if if I may add, what's what's really fascinating for me um, most about working in in this company and this position is that uh, simply finding out about all of the different use cases that uh, that our partners come up. Um, you know, we don't specialize in one or a couple of industries where connectivity is needed because we believe in a very universal and open solutions. And therefore, we offer a lot of flexibility, functionality, and, and have integrated our devices to work with multiple third-party IoT platforms like Thingworks or Azure, for example. 
Um, so to summarize, our devices are competitive across all of the indus industries mentioned in this slide where secure and reliable um, connectivity is essential. Next, I will share just a few of the use cases to help you understand when our part where our partners use our devices, but bear in mind that, uh, well, internally we know about 350 use cases already ranging from uh, mouse traps that send uh, notifications over uh, seller LTE to uh, wind turbines and, uh, and, and massive, uh, you know, seaports. So the range is really quite incredible. <clears throat> um, let's begin with secure connectivity for remote education. Um, and as much as I'd like to stay away from the topic of the current global pandemic, it is actually impacting the connectivity market a lot. Um, one of the areas where we see the biggest growth in demand, uh, apart from uh, remote office applications and, and working from home actually, is remote education. So it's no secret that education is a driver for innovation, which in itself is the driver for a countrywide or a global economy. And uh, we're seeing an enormous surge in demand for cellular connectivity devices for uh, remote education, especially in North America, where projects are ranging between five to 30,000 units. And um, it, it, it's a bit wild, wild west situation here because um, the competition that we are seeing uh, comes from various sources. So we have, um, the professional device manufacturers like Sierra Wireless, Cradlepoint, Digi, Teltonica. Uh, you heard about these for sure. Um, then we have consumer level devices coming in, just simple home 4G routers. And um, we also have MiFi's uh, coming in as a competition as well. So uh, we win some projects, we lose some. Uh, when we lose, we usually lose to the MiFi um, devices and nobody is you know, protected from that. But it's important to understand the solution a little bit better to see where the value lies with a professional device. So it's quite straightforward, to be honest. Um, what you're seeing here is multiple RET240 devices, which are uh, CAT4 cellular devices with Wi-Fi and Ethernet interfaces that uh, are placed inside the school to connect to internal school systems, inside teachers' houses, uh, to connect them uh, to those systems and obviously the students' houses. Um, so they all get connected, right? Um, this data is, is quite sensitive. Um, so um, it is advisable, obviously, to use a secure VPN uh, tunnels and uh, secure VPN channels to uh, establish communication with those internal systems and between the students and, and the teachers. And um, it is not... Uh, not very easy or not possible in some cases to uh, ensure that level of security with, with MiFi's. So in case you um, encounter projects like these, um, it is worth mentioning that using our cloud platform RMS, it is actually possible to set up uh, all of the devices um, uh, with predefined VPN configurations or any other configurations like web filtering, um, content filtering, et cetera, uh, just using the cloud platform. And it's possible to send simply our devices with a very easy instruction of attaching antennas and a SIM card as a bundle package and, um, uh, you know, effectively, um, effectively fulfill such projects. So I think that uh, as much as we'd like that this would go away quite fast, I think that secure connectivity for remote education is going to stay important at least for a little while. Now, going to the next one, um, to the next use case, um, I don't know about you, but I don't know many people who really dislike going to the beach uh, during summertime or just, you know, taking a swim in a lake, sea or an ocean. And um, at least for me, this gives me a you know, strong feeling of, of freedom, of independence, uh, you know, getting close to nature. But we don't always consider that this simple activity for us can be uh, much more challenging for people with impaired mobility. So our partner from Greece uh, called Tobia have come up with a really unique solution to enable disabled people to enjoy a safe swim in the sea without any assistance from others. So as you see in this topology drawing, um, there is a 
rail system. Um, it is powered by uh, solar and um, actually more than 150 locations, uh, these rail systems are placed across the uh, Greek uh, beaches. And um, the key, the key uh, word here is independence, right? So obviously it was not a uh, desire to have a staff available at every single location to uh, basically assist. Um, because that would take away that feeling of independence. Um, so there is simply a controller, like a brain of the solution, connected to, again, our RET240, which sends notifications and um, performance updates via LTE. So it means that um, having multiple um, rails across a beach or a set of beaches, um, fewer personnel can take care of, uh, of their maintenance or make sure that everything is safe and no issues are happening uh, just by being able to um, get notified uh, in case of any uh, important activity. Red Cross uh, is famous global organization, and it was created to aid in life-threatening humanitarian situations. Um, its activities are widespread across the world, but today we're going to focus on German Red Cross Command Support Unit Vehicle. Now, it sounds quite difficult, and, and the topology looks quite difficult, simply because it is a very complex solution. Um, this machine is packed with technology, including live tracking uh, of rescue staff with drone connectivity, uh, notebooks, workstations, printers. Um, and uh, it simply helps to coordinate actions from the field uh, with remote control centers and provide rapid guidance while dealing with a crisis like it could be civil unrest, natural disasters or, or similar. So, we are really quite proud that our RET X11s, um, there are two of them installed in, in each vehicle, have passed strict reliability and security requirements of German Red Cross, um, essentially helping to deal with the life-threatening situations. Um, all of this technology without, without being connected, without connectivity is not, is not as efficient uh, as it is connected. So um, these two devices, are leveraging four different operator connector, uh, connections while keeping two connections active at the same time, um, uh, utilizing load, load balancing um, if, if we have uh, more, uh, more technical people in, 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 the, in the webinar that are interested in these kind of details. And finally, um, well, first responders is a part of of every community is a part of every country around the world and um, obviously it would be impossible to get connectivity in a moving vehicle so um, since police cars uh, across the world are getting more and more technology technology fitted uh, to be more efficient to be more secure to be able to have a traceability of what happened um, the cellular connectivity is essential to connect all of this uh, technology together. So this example is based on, on a few of our, um, few of the projects we did uh, both in, in, in South Africa and in, in, in Europe, Lithuania, Scandinavia, other countries. And um, obviously there are many variations that can happen, many different connectivity products that can be used in a, in a police uh, vehicle or, or emergency vehicle, but uh, the key point here is to have a redundance across um, two different operators. Just to be sure, if, if the connectivity goes down with the primary operator, the router will switch itself to the secondary operator, and once the connection is back on the primary, it'll, it will go back, meaning that all of the technology, including license plate cameras, speed cameras, um, laptops, uh, any onboard computing devices that are connected with secure VPN channels with the police databases stay connected and are connected. So um, that was just a very quick uh, insight into, into our business, into the use cases that we have. And, uh, you know, we're simply excited to show you much more in the future. 
That was awesome. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, Marius, would you mind going to the, the slide that compares the different routers, uh, the three different routers? I've got a few uh, people that emailed me some questions um, so I can kind of go over them. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, okay. So again, just to make sure these are US dollar uh, MSRPs, uh, but anyways, so, um, so the first question is, uh, uh, so a lot of North America deals with the oil and gas industry. So I'm wondering, um, do you have, can you talk about the, the class one division two uh, certifications for kind of the, the, the high risk areas? Hazardous locations, you mean, right? Yeah. Um, it, we don't actually have these certifications for our current devices, but we are always um, evaluating, you know, what sort of, um, what sort of demand is for these products. Uh, there is a great deal of demand for this for sure, but we want to get closer to those opportunities to really, um, you know, outweigh the investments rather quickly. So if, if we get um, close to some projects with, with the partners that we, that we trust, with the partners that we rely on, and they say, look, you know, if, if, if you, you have everything, everything you need in the device, the device works great, it has all the specifications we need, just needs uh, you know, additional certification like, like ATEX, for example. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a question of, of opportunity. If the opportunity is good enough, we can go through that process together and, and, um, and certify our devices, or at least evaluate you know, which, which ones of our devices can be, um, can be certified, or do we need any hardware changes, do we need any firmware changes? Because the key word with, with Teltonica is really flexibility, because we mm -hmm. simply you know, own every step of the process. Okay, perfect. Um, we've got a question here uh, from a participant. This might be a little tough to answer, um, and uh, we might require some follow-up from Sebastian or Tina or Joel from Novatech. But the question, very specifically, is: Are your are the Teltonica products secure enough for the public sector in Canada? So, uh, have they, or would the first responders, the police, EMS, fire, consider using your Teltonica products instead of? Um, some of the ones they're using right now. Now, obviously, uh, we all heard that you work in Scandinavia, but can you, are you able to talk specifically about the Canadian environment? Um, I'll try to do my best. Uh, obviously, our experience in, in Canada and, and the States is not as long as in other countries, but in this uh, short time, we, uh, we did a few, uh, few projects that would probably support the idea that we are able to capture those opportunities together. So um, in terms of the public sector, um, our products are placed in, um, in one of the uh, Canadian uh, cities um, intelligent traffic infrastructure, which was a public project. And obviously every you know, public domain has different requirements and, and different, um, different needs. So if somebody would bring forward those requirements to us, we could easily evaluate and, uh, you know, and provide feedback. But uh, as, a, as, a, as a precedent, we have um, uh, our products already uh, offering connectivity in Canadian public sector. So that would be you know, one, one of the things in favor of this question. Another okay. thing what I wanted to mention is that um, um, the, the question was uh, public sector in Canada. Oh, um, considering utilizing these products instead of um, other products, um, especially with first responders, uh, police and emergency, um, there is sometimes a barrier of entry uh, because uh, imagine uh, one city has, let's say, a thousand police cars already with connectivity deployed. And, and this connectivity is deployed with a competitor's device and they're utilizing a competitor's um, um, device management platform. Now, it's sometimes difficult uh, to, uh, to convince uh, upon the extension of the fleet to uh, add a different manufacturer devices, uh, different than the ones already deployed, and have two uh, different uh, device management platforms that are being active at the same time. But um, in essence, uh, our plan is to make our remote management system and uh, not only functional with uh, our devices, but also be able to 
support management of other manufacturer devices. So there is not a clear timeline or a deadline, but that should probably happen in the next half a year, which would essentially eliminate such an objection. Okay, perfect. Uh, obviously, the hot topic on, uh, you know, more in the world of consumer than in industrial IoT, but it's 5G. Uh, mm -hmm. what, can you just take a few seconds to talk about your roadmap for 5G? Absolutely. Um, 5G um, is obviously different technology than the narrowband, but um, we consider that right now we are in the world of 5G hype. 5G will be here. <laughs> and it will be uh, global. Uh, it will be uh, very fast and very useful and it will you know, open up uh, possibilities for innovation even more. Um, but uh, we like to uh, say that we are in, in, in business of doing business. So we, so far we see a lot of um, marketing um, directed towards 5G. But the thing is, in the short term, 5G is not solving any big issues. For example, here um, in Europe with LTE CAT6 device, uh, we can reach uh, speeds of 150, uh, 200 megabits per second, no problem. So uh, for many applications, including streaming in 4K, that's not a problem. Of course, 5G has many more you know, different uh, specifications that are going to be essential for connected vehicles, for um, for um, what's the word uh, for autonomous driving applications and it's going to be spreading quite rapidly but it's not going to be spreading um, much uh, faster than 4G was so you remember when 4G started it started in, in, in biggest cities in, in, in biggest metropolis areas and then it was it, it spread until it, it had a good enough coverage uh, country-wide or, or, or continent-wide. So um, since, since about half a year ago, we're testing different 5G modules. We're working on it. We're getting to know the technology. Okay. And we're simply going to uh, launch when we see that module prices reach uh, reasonable levels and that the demand levels are going to be you know, reasonable in terms of uh, R&D investment. So um, okay. we, we never release, uh, we, we never release the device first, right? With uh -huh. the new technology, it's just, uh, we wait to see until, uh, until it's actually well commercialized and, you know, we, we jump in in there. We sort of okay. await some of the first mistakes like that. Okay. Uh, got a couple more great questions from the audience. Um, one of them's talking about North American carrier approval. Obviously, are you guys, you know, Verizon, ATT, Sprint, and then Canada with Bell, Telus, Rogers. So can you talk about, I, I don't know, which devices are approved, but, but generally, uh, what's your approval for the carriers? Sure. So um, it's, been, it's been tough to, uh, to get to know how all the certifications are done across the ocean, but... Uh, um, for, for quite some time, we'll, we have um, the, the Verizon and AT&T certifications for the devices you're seeing in this uh, comparison table. So 240, 950, 955 are fully AT&T and Verizon certified. Um, the RET X11 um, Verizon certification is just around the corner. Um, it's in the final stages of development and we're... We actually expected it to, to be done about two weeks ago, but uh, well, summertime and uh, and a bit <laughs> diff a bit more different uh, global situation is, is is pushing back this this time a little bit, but it's eventuality anyway. And um, uh, with Bell, um, there's no problem. You know, we're partners, uh, and and our devices work great on on Bell connectivity. Uh, with Rogers, I've been a little bit um, outside the scope of the Canadian uh, operator market, but I think we spoke uh, just just before that we're doing a Rogers certification as well. Um, with Sprint, I think that um, there's a little bit more complexity because after all of this merging, they're pushing uh, one band a lot, and this um, in turn pushes us to use a different module. So. Um, we are sort of behind in terms of certifications with, with Sprint, 
but AT&T, Verizon, Bell, Rogers, good to go um, with these devices and the little asterisk next to the X11 is just waiting for the paperwork to go through. Okay, perfect. Um, so I had another great question here. So um, this one, it's gonna sound redundant, but we've, we've, we were delivered a lot of great information um, during this webinar, but we've got a person that simply asked, what are the, what are the key identifiers for your products? And I think, uh, so, so to separate you away from the competition, so do, do you wanna maybe just go through the chart here just quickly on the 240, 950, and 955, you know, I know it's industry specific and application specific, but what are one or, the, one or two things that uh, really set that device apart? Uh, to because I mean, at the end of the day, we're you and I are here to help our channel partners sell these mm -hmm. devices, right? That's all we're yeah. that's uh, all we're here to do. So, what are the one or two sound bites on each product that that can really kind of push this over the edge for them? Okay, uh, I I got the nature of the question now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, we are me and Tadas, we're both ex sales, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. know this thing, we know this thing, and uh, yeah. From, from my experience, um, you know, we, we didn't invent Ethernet. We didn't invent cellular. We didn't invent Wi-Fi. There is nothing- And you weren't the first people to do it too. There is nothing <laughs> extremely, uh, you know, extraordinary about these devices. The only extraordinary thing about them is the value, right? Yeah. So um, when you know, we do all of these presentations, when we do all of these webinars and, 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 and people eventually see um, how much it costs, we, we, we get an objection of disbelief. Mm -hmm. And this disbelief is e the most easiest to, um, to break um, into a, um, let's say, to, 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 to transform it into appreciation um, with testing. Mm -hmm. So if an engineer uh, takes our device in his hands and tests it out, um, obviously having experience with our other devices and compares the price, it's a, it's a sale, um, nine cases out of 10. And um, being a bit more specific about the 240, um, it's simply small and powerful. I mean, even the Wi-Fi with the 240, you can uh, have a 50 concurrent Wi-Fi connections and it's going to stay uh, absolutely stable. Um, you're not going to have any hardware bottlenecks on the seller and, and, and ethernet as with some, um, for example, um, Asian devices like Chinese made devices which state mm -hmm. the same specifications but they leave it in the background that in, in reality they are not going to be even close to the speeds uh, declare, de that are being declared in theory. So mm -hmm. with the 955 I'd like to highlight that this is absolute Optimus Prime when it comes to industry. It has Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU, loads eight different inputs and outputs that can be controlled with um, SMS, uh, email uh, notifications and alerts, two different serial ports. It's a powerhouse when it comes to industry and, and transportation, especially public transportation. When you're looking just for a simple connectivity device, you don't need much. You need um, maybe one or two Ethernet ports, uh, Wi-Fi, yes or no. RET 240 is just like a Swiss, Swiss knife, right? If you yep. done, if the connectivity, um, uh, physical connectivity, supports the application, uh, 240 hands down, because you're yeah. going to find more functional uh, device from a firmware side and from the cloud platform side um, than the 240 for the price. Now the 950 is a great device in the middle, simply because. Sometimes you need a bit more physical interfaces, but sometimes you don't need as many industrial interfaces like the 955. And it has that dual SIM functionality that helps with uh, connectivity redundance. So uh, having uh, these three devices in mind, uh, the way I present them, should, you know, should really help to place the product into the hands of the people who will test it. And that's the most important step. Right. Now with the X11, it excels with speeds, both with cellular because it's CAT6 device and with Wi-Fi offering uh, both VGN and AC Wi-Fi at the same time. Okay. So, and then if I can add from a Noatech perspective, because uh, 
we, uh, you know, I hear from a lot of different customers and what's, uh, there's three things generally important to the customers that I deal with and I can follow up uh, uh, with Deltonica, uh, with Del uh, your answer, is that uh, they, our customers, channel partners, uh, appreciate good service. So we can, you know, we're always uh, uh, following up with uh, RMAs uh, on any devices and, you know, that's, that's kind of Teltonica agnostic, but, you know, we do do that. And another thing, the two other things that are, our uh, customers and prospects care about is number one is availability of product and number two is price. So I think hands down price per uh, value is there for in the 240 and the 950, actually all the products, no doubt. Uh, and then availability, like uh, we have zero problems and have had zero problems with supply, even through these, um, uh, these issues, uh, you know, global supply chain issues. And that's important. I mean, we've had customers choose a competitive device uh, based on supply. So, uh, and we haven't had supply issues with Teltonica, which is, which is quite good. So if I, if I may simply add that, you know, we are entering the North American market, um, not now, not because we didn't notice it be, be, before. We wanted yeah. to be strong enough. We were building for it. And uh, now that we have office in Canada, um, we have extremely resilient supply chain and manufacturing in Europe. Um, we have all the certifications. We have um, support, technical support engineers working in the North American time zone as well. Um, all the technical support tools that, uh, that are so famous here in Europe are available to uh, across the pond as well. So, um, you know, we, we're, when we're doing something, we're doing it for real. So that's why okay. now we are going into the You're all in. North yeah. American market. So uh, another quite great question here, actually, your, your network management software, your NMS, uh, can, you, can our customers host it on-premises in a private network or does it have to be through the cloud? Uh, absolutely. You know, okay. the flexibility extends here as well. Um, obviously, you know, if you're going to have, um, you know, a few hundred uh, routers it probably will not make sense to place a separate server and, and and be responsible for its maintenance but we recognize that for especially financial or or, or governmental institutions that's not a question of of choice that uh, it's a requirement so we offer a private installations of rms on premises and um you know we we've done multiple installations like that especially due to you know governmental uh, requirements or requirements of financial institutions but um, it, it always easier just to use the cloud uh, the cloud okay. solution obviously and i think you mentioned it earlier uh, you said linux but is it uh, is the os linux or ms microsoft um, the firmware of our devices um, is based on open w open wrt which is an embedded Linux distribution. Um, we call it RETOS uh, simply because it's been in development for, for 10 years now, I'd, I'd say, and it's uh, really evolved beyond you know, what, uh, what people are used to see from, from OpenWRT. But uh, for many engineers, that's actually a great plus because they, they understand it, they know it, yeah. and they know yeah. how much you know, tinkering can be done with it. Okay, so that's just to be clear. I, I think I muddled the question. The the network management software does it run on a Linux or a Microsoft box? Oh, R RMS, uh, remote management uh, platform, uh, remote management system that that we have uh, like a cloud plan, um, yeah. cloud platform. Um, it's you know it's a great question. I don't know the architecture. It simply runs on okay. AWS, and um, uh, we have a hardware requirements for on premises. RMS installations, but uh, you know what sort of architecture goes there. I guess we can call it a commercial secret for now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Uh, and I think I should know the answer to this, but I mean, because we're so concentrated in Canada, I, I, I will have to get you to expand it from from a purchasing perspective. Uh, are you exclusively th sold through um, distributors in uh, Canada, and North America? Can you remind our audience how your sales works? Well, since I mentioned that um, there is no single market where, um, where we are specialized or focused, we try to capture all opportunities in the connectivity market and the professional connectivity market. We 
to work uh, well, depending on the country, depending on the region. We work with our uh, distributors. Um, we obviously have some uh, direct contact with, uh, with, with integrators or, or, or big end users as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not at liberty to discuss too much about the North American market uh, strategy in terms of sales. And uh, I guess that, that can be done better by, by our uh, guys responsible for, uh, for, for that directly. Yep. Whatever okay. comes to marketing, I'm your guy. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and we know too, Teltonica, I mean, for the audience, Teltonica is very, um, they're with us in sales support too. So any opportunities, they're certainly happy to, to get with uh, our salespeople, our sales engineers and our engineers to make sure that we're working through solutions because um, uh, there are so many different applications and uses for the product and things can get complicated pretty quickly. So we'll give a, uh, just a few seconds. So I don't, uh, I don't have any more questions that I know of. Let me just quickly see here. One moment here. Uh, so I have a question here. Um, uh, we had a question I think you might have covered is do you, you, you have dual SIMs, but do you have anything with dual modems so you can be bonded across two, two carriers? And I think, I think you said in the police application you have that, do you not? We do. Uh, we just recently launched one of our devices, RET X12. Mm -hmm. um, like we do with most of our products, uh, which are quite new for us, obviously not new in the market, this dual module LT CAT6 device is uh, currently sold in, in, in Europe and in other regions where the standard modules um, have the band supported. And uh, obviously the plan is to bring it to, uh, to the North American market as well, but it would be difficult to um, estimate the, the date or the quarter that it's going to uh, be there. Obviously, um, uh, we're always very responsive to the interest shown and what sort of projects we see being registered. So if you guys have a lot of demand for, for, for this dual module device, um, make sure to ask Novatech. Novatech will get in touch with us. We're going to aggregate the demand and we're going to you know, accelerate the um, availability for this device in the North American market as much as possible. Okay, perfect. Uh, one more question we got here is uh, with regard to the remote management service, the cloud service. Uh, you might have mentioned it already, but can you, uh, how, how does the pricing on that work? Not, not so much how much does it cost, but what is the pricing structure? So everybody is, to, uh, is, is free to try the remote management system because each and every single device bought new uh, comes with 30-day um, license, 30-day uh, credit to, to fully utilize and, and you know, see the value of RMS. Um, and eventually it works with a credit-based system. So one credit for one device for one month of monitoring. And... Um, eventually you will be able to to communicate the the pricing that you that you offer to your um to to your clients uh, but uh, it's uh, well simply said it's as competitive uh, across the market as our devices okay um, and then i've got one one more question too <laughs> i keep saying one more but <laughs> they're coming in <laughs> shortly but so this is more for Novatech. so that we've got a, a person looking for demo units so um, we can actually absolutely work with you guys. So um, definitely reach out to uh, marketing at Novatech or sales at Novatech and we can talk through your situation and uh, see, uh, see what we can do as far as a demo unit goes. That we, we treat things on a case by case basis. Um, do I have another one here? No, I think that's all for now. We'll give uh, Go ahead. One, one little thing I also noticed perhaps in the chat that somebody was inquiring about uh, narrowband IoT devices. Uh, so um, just a quick, uh, you know, quick note, um, we have much wider product portfolio than, that, that, than we presented here today. So you're always welcome to come into our website, take a look at all of the products because we have different products for narrowband IoT, LT, CATM1, um, uh, we're simply, you know, starting our first big steps, big strides in the North American market with, with the devices that we know are going to, um, you know, dominate 
quickly and, and, and with time, uh, with your interest, uh, with your feedback, we're going to certify other devices that we already have available and, and successful here, uh, here in Europe. Uh, so there's much more from Teltonica Networks than, than was shown in this presentation. And as well, the use cases that I mentioned can also be found in, inside our, on our web. So teltonica-networks.com. Perfect. All right, so I think, uh, Marius, I think that's about all. Uh, I, I, I give it a few more minutes, we, or sorry, I give it a few minutes, and we, I don't think we have any more questions, but um, uh, so Novatech will be sending out a summary of this presentation so you guys can uh, have, have it, uh, so our, our audience can have it. Um, as I said, please reach out to either, you know, look up the products on the Novatech website or on teltonica-networks.com. Um, all of our channel partners can see the pricing, their pricing for their products if you log into novatech.com because I think everybody, most of the channel partners uh, on this call know that we have an e-procurement portal now where you can log in with your own account information and see your pricing and see stock levels uh, on the equipment. So, or uh, send us an email info at novatech.com and we'll, we'll get things going. So thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, we really, really appreciate uh, talking to you, Marius. Um, and I look forward to talking to you again. Sounds good. Thank you for this opportunity. And, you know, I, I think that, we're going to show you much, much more in the future in terms of use cases and products. So uh, great energy, great you know, introductions and support while doing this webinar. Novotech are real, um, you know, strong. And, and ev even though our, our partnership is new, um, it's, it's, already, it's already strong and, and it's going to be even stronger in the future. So trust Teltonica, trust Novotech. We can... Uh, Together we can help with connectivity and connectivity is really going to be booming in, in the next few years. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Have a good day.